Hey bye, Thomas here. So today I'm working on filling an order. I've already cut columns for a couple down the road. They're building a new house. And they want some massive columns holding up a massive beam. And they also want a mantle. All out of the same species of wood. And it just so happened that I had some poplar that I got out of Greene County, Mississippi uh, that actually will meet the order. I've already cut the columns. The columns right now are, they need to be eight by eight by nine foot long. Right now they're eight by eight by around 10 and a half foot long. I always like to give a little bit extra so they have some wiggle room to work with. Uh, the eight by eight columns, I'm not gonna lie, they were uh, quite heavy. They're, again, they're out of poplar and everything. Uh, I was moving them around and they are hefty. I'll say that, they are very hefty. This beam that those columns are going to be holding up is going to be an 8 by 10 by 14 foot. That's a pretty massive beam. Now on this log right here, I'm sitting at about 20 and a half inches by about 19 inches. Now this is the butt end. On the other end, there's not a whole lot of tapering to this log. I'm still sitting at about uh, 17 by 15 on the other end of the log. And there is a little notch that comes out. The log length that I have here is about 15 and a half foot, and again, I'm looking for a 14 footer. That being said, I always like to give a little extra, so I'm going to keep it at full length. I'm not going to trim anything down. What my plan is, is I don't want to do a whole lot of cuts on this. I want to keep the cuts to a minimum, uh, just so I can maximize the log and everything, but I'm trying to get some pretty hefty pieces out of this. I know that my orientation, the widest, is in this direction. So in this direction, and it looks like it throughout the length of the log, is where I want to have my 10 inch denomination. And I don't know yet if they want a live edge face on the mantle. I think they do. Um, but the back side will have to be squared up. So I'll, I'll take that into consideration. I just want to get the initial 8 by 10 cut out of the center section. And then below, excuse me, below and above that, I'm going to try to get my mantle pieces out. So what I'm going to do on this log is I'm going to cut probably about a, maybe an inch and a half or two inch cut down on the top here. Then I'll go down to where I consider, I'll, I'll mark on the log where the eight inch mark is and everything. I want to be able to get, I have to get a mantle that's going to be four inches thick. Um, I don't know the width yet. I, I think that they're, they're coming over this afternoon to take a look. I, I would say with a four inch thick mantle, you would want at least 10 is inches wide I should say not thick so four inch thick ten inch wide and the length they said was 88 inches so it's a pretty hefty mantle in itself too but I think I can get the column and the mantles out of this and again my goal is I'll do a, a, a cut here like a reference cut and I'll probably flip it 180 and do another reference cut there I'll mark out my eight inches because this again this is where I want to keep my eight inch denomination and then my ten inch denomination the longer longer portion of it and then I'll see which one, top or bottom, will give me the best mantles. In actuality, I'm probably going to cut two mantles. Uh, one will be for this one couple. And, and by the length of this thing, I might actually get multiple mantles because this is going to be pretty hefty. Or maybe super duty heavy benches. I haven't figured that out yet. But uh, the way I'm going to film this one is going to be a little bit similar or different than how, how I usually cut it, however you want to call it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do some hyperlapse at first, do some of my initial cuts and everything, and I'll probably save the last cuts, uh, whatever the beam size is, to do in real time. And that's because I don't want y'all to sit there, because I'm i learning as I cut this, because I don't know exactly how I want to do this, and I don't want to uh, waste your time. I want to make sure you have something interesting to watch. So I'm going to do a little bit of hyperlapse cutting until I get things where I need to be, get my initial measurements and my reference cuts. And then I'll start getting my precision cuts uh, where I actually get the, the beam out of here. I think this is going to be a pretty neat looking uh, piece. This poplar down here in Mississippi is different from the poplar we have up in Tennessee. And it, not that it's different, but in the way that it, it colors and darkens over time. The poplar I cut up in Tennessee typically has some grays, blues, greens, some yellows. That's typical and everything. It's kind of a light color. The poplar down here in Mississippi, it um, you cut it and it's, it's usually like a pretty dark vibrant green color but as it ages it darkens like the green becomes brown and then the uh, sapwood which is typically like a light color becomes a a blonde color so it's, it's pretty neat i uh 
And, and when, the, when the customers saw some of the wood I ha had out here, they're like, that's what we want. We want that color right there. So I said, okay, I can do that. So I've got the columns already cut, 8x8 columns, and now we'll see if we can get an 8x10 out of here as well as a mantle. So here we go. Have fun. Okay, so the first few cuts went really well. Got the log turned over. I actually did a blade change out, and then when I did the blade change out, uh, I actually had the customers come over and take a look at it and make sure that they were happy with what they were seeing. And they were. Look at this. Isn't that just beautiful? I mean, this, this log has some amazing color. This is going to be a beam in a house I and mean, that's just that is just awesome and yet again poplar is my favorite wood to cut whether it be from tennessee or from mississippi something else is uh i think you probably saw on the first time lapse i was actually able to peel off the bark pretty easily even the the grain on the or the uh the texture of this uh edge here is awesome the other side of that looks great as well. Um, this actually would be probably a pretty cool sign piece. I like how it has that waviness to it. It's got those live edges. It's an inch and a half thick. So now we're going to be doing the real-time cutting of this slab here. I was going to turn it and have this be the bottom side, but I'm actually going to keep it the way it is and just make the cut. Uh, it will be eight inches so i'm gonna have i've got a ten and a half inches right now my bottom board's gonna be two and a half inches which will be perfect for making a shelf even a mantle or whatever this is a beautiful piece of poplar uh, the, the log is just super solid and, and pretty straight I, i've taken all the uh, the the craziness off of the other end of this and then take a look at the sawdust that came off here that greenish yellow sawdust hoping that shows up in the time lapse where you can just see just that color coming off <laughs> but uh very pretty specimen of poplar again as this uh wood ages this will come become like that brown color you see right there that's actually the same tree just a, a higher section and then the uh the sap wood on either end here will be kind of like that blondish color so that's what this is destined to look like, and that'll actually be pretty neat for uh, for the columns and even the mantle. So, pretty impressive. But they were really impressed when they saw this, uh, this edge. We're going to leave a live face. So once I peel this bark off, well, I can't do it by hand right now. But the bark, actually, I'm very happy. It's releasing really easily right now. But once I get that bark off, I'm going to do little to no sanding on that face. So that's why... I took it off of the tractor the way I did, and I will show that at the end of the video what that mantelpiece is going to look like. But again, the mantelpiece, which I just put over there in the pile on the side over there, I'll do a little reveal of that at the end of the, the video. But that's, they want 12 inches wide, 4 inches thick, and 88 inches, but it's going to be quite a bit longer, and there will also be some corval pieces that we'll be able to cut out of it as well. So now on to the, the final cutting. So let me set this up. Where you can see this and I'm going to be doing again an eight inch cut from where I'm currently at so I'm at ten and a half inches I will be cutting where I'll have a two and a half inch board I'm actually going to cut it a smidge more smidge being a word but uh, I'm going to cut it a little bit more than eight inches uh, just to allow for any kind of shrinkage there might be a little bit of shrinkage but I've already cut the uh, the post and I measured them and it wasn't much it was maybe you know it's just a hair under so i'll cut a hair over and we'll see kind of what it looks like 
All right, let me, let me get to it. Blade's nice and sharp. This is a, a blade that uh, Robert had sharpened up for me. I did have some pretty amazing blowouts of blades this weekend. Um, yeah, it was impressive. I wasn't recording any of that, but uh, it was impressive. So we'll go eight inches down. I really do want to flip this dang thing, though. I want to flip it. And it'll be okay if I flip it because... Now, I'm going to leave her as she is. I just need to take it out. Because if I flip it, I could hurt the face with the turner. I'll leave it where she is.
I cut that very slow because I want to make sure that I didn't have any deviations in my blade up or down. Pretty happy. My pith is going to be right in the center of this uh, beam, which is good. That'll help to, you know, prevent it from going to one section, section or the other. The good thing is on the exact other side, I've got it dead center. So my pith is literally four inches on both sides, which is perfect. Now, what I have to do is I'll have to um, get everything off of here real quick. Uh, then I'll have to come back and I'll probably put this side down and I'll come back and do a cut off the top. I'll probably do a... I'll actually, I'll probably, since it's 8 inches wide, I'll get a couple boards out of this. It'll be good to use for some stuff because this is going to have some nice color to it. And then once I get a nice straight edge on the bottom, I'll flip it back over and start working on that side. Um, weight on this column or this beam is, uh, is going to be a lot. A lot, lot. Um, we'll see. <laughs> uh, we haven't figured out exactly how we're going to get this thing up. Uh, once it's all uh, ready to be put up, that's that's about 90 plus days away. But I went ahead and get this thing cut, uh, start some of the drying process in the barn before we get it over there. So maybe we'll lose a decent amount of uh, water weight. I don't know. Um, this is a beast, so beast. Because right now, you know, this is we already measured. This is like 20 inches or so. So I've got quite a bit to take off of either side, uh, but. I've got to get this off, so let me go ahead and do some more time-lapse stuff, because you don't need to see me in real time with the tractor, trying to get this behemoth off. I'll probably have to take the entirety of the log section off as it is right here, put it off to the side, and then come back and put this back on there. And, of course, it never fails to turn the tractor off, or turn the sawmill off, and i got my log stops all the way down, uh, so I'll have to raise those back up. Not a big deal, but it's just like, dang it, why didn't I do that before I turned it off? I, I have my uh, procedure in place. I just didn't follow my my own guide. So yeah, it continues. Here we go. Okay, so beam complete, all squared up, pith pretty darn close to the center. Now it, it favors the top side there a little bit more than the bottom side. Not too overly worried, concerned about that. But it is close to the center. Dimensions right at 8 inches by 10 inches. And the overall length on this is 15.5. Color, pretty impressive. The phone's not doing it justice just on how green this is. I mean, it is, it is very green. But uh, got some pretty nice cutoffs. I'll get those off here in a little bit. But uh, the beam is, is complete. And then the mantle piece, and then this other piece here, which I don't know, I might turn this into, I don't know, it could be anything. Talk about some beautiful color look at that ain't that something you got uh, almost like a purplish brown color there of course this the dark greens a little bit of black lines looks good and you get a lot of sawdust down here but then this piece right here this is going to be the mantle section and I'm thinking Maybe this side will be the, the live edge face. So the cool thing is, is this bark is actually coming apart or coming off real easy on me, which is awesome. But that's what the face will look like. So that looks pretty cool. I don't think I'm gonna do much to it, but uh, that'll be a pretty neat looking face there. Now I do have a little scuff right there, but uh, not too, not too bad. So happy with it bark just comes right off 
The mantle is going to be four inches thick, 12 inches wide, with the back end being squared up, so nominally 12 inches on the face. And then, uh, what, 88 inches long, but I've got plenty to work here, <laughs> work here with. I've got, uh, again, 15.5 on length. Pretty, uh, pretty massive pieces here. So I hope this has been enjoyable. I mean, I, I will uh, do a second video at some point, depending on whether or not they want me to finish up this mantle or just have the, the raw mantle. But uh, I'll see if I can do another video at some point. But for the most part, this video is complete. Cutting the columns, which I didn't really show. I think I showed that in some other video. Cutting the beam and then cutting the mantle all out of one tree of poplar. So exciting. Can't wait to see the final product, what this looks like. At some point, I'll have to do a collage of some pictures that shows, you know, projects that I've uh, helped work on and where they are in their completion. All right, y'all. See you around. Thanks.